Welcome, parishioners and visitors to St. Wenceslaus Church on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. I am Don Cluthy, Jerry Hoffman, and I are your lectors for this liturgy. The following are the announcements for this Sunday. All women are invited to attend a special candlelight mass on Thursday, September 8th at 7.30 p.m. celebrating the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hannah Kiesling will provide the music and Father Taylor will preside over this beautiful celebration. St. Wenceslaus is hosting a blood drive for the Red Cross on Saturday, September 10th from 7.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in Kane Hall. Appointments are still available for you to register and give life-saving blood to the Red Cross. Please go to the Red Cross site online in order to register. Vaslov, our parish festival, is returning to St. Wenceslaus at the end of the month, Friday, September 23rd, is a night for adults featuring live music, food and drinks, fellowship, and more. Sunday, September 25th, is family fun day. Games and activities for the kids. For more information, talk to a Vaslov committee member in the North X after Mass. St. Wenceslaus is proud to present Welcome, created by Dynamic Catholic and Matthew Kelly. Welcome is an overnight experience for adult parishioners to reflect on their lives, their spiritual journeys, and build meaningful relationships within our parish. The men's weekend is the first weekend in October. The women's weekend is the second weekend in October. For more information, see the bulletin or the parish website. Everyone is invited to our Labor Day Mass on Monday 9 a.m. in the main church. The blessing for expectant mothers will be given in the day chapel after Mass today. The scripture readings for our liturgy and breaking bread, page 208. So there, are, there may be no strangers among us. Please stand, welcome those around you, and introduce yourself to those you do not know. <clears throat> Our pre-celebrant is Father Taylor. Our deacon is Joe Coolis. Good morning. Our opening hymn is number 305, Our God is Here, number 305. Here in this time, here in this place, here we are standing face to face here in our hearts here in our lives our god is here here for the broken here for the strong here in this temple we belong here in our hearts here in our lives our god is here and we cry holy, holy, holy are you. We cry holy, holy, holy and true. Amen, we do believe our God is here. Our God is here.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Special welcome to Father Joseph from the congregation of St. Vincent de Paul in India. He'll be speaking to us today. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you died and rose that we may have eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you challenge us to take up our cross and follow you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earth in shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or whoever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high, and thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord.
have been our refuge in every age, O Lord. You have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust and say, Return, O children of men, to your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday come and gone, or like a watch in the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You sweep them away like a dream, like grass which is fresh in the morning. In the morning it sprouts and is fresh. By evening it withers and fades. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Then teach us to number our days, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Turn back, O oh Lord, how long. Show pity to your servants. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. At dawn, fill us with your merciful love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. Oh, give success to the work of our hands. In every age, O oh Lord, you been our refuge. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, 
Welcome him as you would me, the word of the Lord. According to Luke, great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sister, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there's enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what, what king marching the battle would not first sit down decide whether with 10,000 troops he can be successfully opposed another king, advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I bring prayerful greetings from the Vincentian missionaries and seminarians in India and in other parts of the world. My name is Father Joseph Arakil, as Father Taylor introduced me. And I belong to the Vincentian Congregation, which is a missionary-sending religious community founded in India, modeled after the Congregation of the Mission founded by St. Vincent de Paul. At the very outset, I would like to extend the deepest gratitude of all the missionaries and seminarians to Archbishop Lucas, to the director of the Pontifical Missions of the Archdiocese, 
and the wonderful pastor, Father Mike, for their most gracious invitation to be part of the Archdiocesan Missionary Cooperation Plan and come to your parish this weekend, representing the Vincentian missionaries to preach about our ministry and of our needs. The scripture readings of today's Mass help us understand the meaning, the true meaning of discipleship. In the first reading taken from the Book of Wisdom, we have a beautiful prayer placed by the author of the Book of Wisdom on the lips of Solomon. Solomon in this prayer addressed to God the Creator asks for God's wisdom to rule his people with the holiness and righteousness. He also asks the guidance of the Holy Spirit that he may always walk in God's ways. In other words, Solomon was asking for a GPS, God positioning system, the Holy Spirit, which I am sure all of us, like Solomon, can ask for. Ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the God positioning system, the heavenly GPS. Then in the responsorial psalm, we prayed for God's guidance and all of us, especially during this labor week, wish each other, may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours at all times. That's a beautiful prayer. Then in the second reading taken from the letter of Paul to Philemon, we are reminded that we all are children of God and that we must welcome and care for one another as God cares for us. The gospel reading taken from St. Luke's gospel, Jesus teaches us the true meaning of discipleship. A true disciple is someone who prefers God to everyone else. The strong words used like hate and love is more of, of a preference, prefer God to every and Jesus to everyone else. A disciple must carry one's cross and follow Jesus. And thirdly, a disciple to renounce all possessions to be a faithful follower of Jesus. The Vincentian missionaries following the wonderful of Saint Vincent de Paul tried to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. We place, we give first place in our lives for God. We have no possessions of any kind, not even a penny in our name. And we try to take up our crosses that God gives us. The Vincentian missionaries, following the example of St. Vincent de Paul, primarily serve the poorest of the poor in every part of the world. Our mission is to proclaim the good news, especially to the poor. You know, our work in the missions have been rather successful, partly due to the generous financial assistance we have been receiving from Catholics here in, here in the United States and most especially 
from Catholics here in the Archdiocese of Omaha. I have made mission appeals to the Archdiocese many times in the past, and people have been extremely generous to our cause. So it is our hope and prayer that the good people here in this wonderful parish will follow that wonderful tradition of mission support. Won't you? Thank you. There are many needs of which I could speak of. Rather than speak of the many needs that we have, this morning I thought I would like to share with you of a special blessing that we have in our missions. For years, you and I have been praying for an increase in vocations to priesthood and religious life, haven't you? You haven't, it is time to start. And I have wonderful news for you. Our prayers for vocations have been answered. This is especially true of the state of Kerala in South India. It is the home base of the Vincentian congregation, the area first evangelized by St. Thomas the Apostle. In Kerala, India, because of the strong family life, because of the fact that the parents instill deep appreciation for the gift of faith, and since we live for the most part among Hindus and Muslims, we have many vocations. The only shortage we have is the shortage of funds. Here on the other hand, then the Archdiocese of Omaha and elsewhere, it appears that there is no shortage of funds. But we do have shortage of vocations. There in the missions, it is just the opposite. Can you help us educate wonderful young men who are willing and ready to be formed as missionaries? But they do lack one thing, the funds needed. When you came into the church through the main door, probably you noticed the pictures of some of our wonderful young seminarians. Those men whose pictures are shown have completed four years of their training. They have eight more years to go before they are ordained priests. They are intelligent, devout, holy men, but they do lack one thing, the funds needed. So one of the primary reasons of my coming over to your parish this weekend was to request you to help us educate those men so that we can provide good priests for the church, especially as we need them very badly today. You can help those men in three different ways. First, through prayer. During this Mass, and maybe during this month, especially pray for our seminarians, especially through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, whose birthday we are celebrating this week. I wish everyone a happy Mother's Day, being the feast of our Holy Mother. Secondly, you can assist us by making a very generous and substantial offering through the second collection <coughs> today, which will be taken up after communion. So the second collection taken up after communion will be to support the Vincentian seminarians and help the Vincentian missionaries in their mission work. There is also a third way, and that is by personally or individually sponsoring one of those seminarians in his studies for priesthood. You can sponsor a seminarian by making a small offering, as little as a dollar a day. 
$360 a year that will offer a partial scholarship for one of our seminarians. But can you buy these stays for a dollar? Not even a cup of coffee unless you are a senior. But it will provide a partial scholarship for one of our seminarians. The seminarian whom you sponsor this way will pray for you daily, will correspond with you if you like, and once ordained will be your special priest to represent you in the missions. If you are able to sponsor, support one of our seminarians, please see me after Mass. I will be in the back of the church. I can provide you the name, photo, and the details of one of the seminarians. Here I have the picture of a seminarian by name Matthew Wallat. Matthew was born on June 4, 2002. With your help, Matthew will be ordained a priest in December 2029. Similarly, there are many others waiting for your support. Incidentally, the full tuition, the full cost of educating a seminarian in India is about $4,000. In St. Louis and elsewhere, St. Louis Seminary and elsewhere, I, I was told it is more like 40000 or more. That is for a year. In addition to the support of our seminarians, there are many, many other needs. Those needs can be met through a generous offering today through the second collection. Any offering that you can prayerfully give, 20, 50, 100 dollars, can make, the, make a difference in the lives of the poor in our missions and in the lives of the seminarians. If you are not prepared to make an offering today, you may bring your offering next Sunday in a specially marked envelope or drop in the parish office. Your offerings today for the missions will provide food, clothing, education, housing, and most importantly, gospel message in to thousands of poor in addition to the support of our seminarians. So please be generous. Our missionaries, our seminarians, and all the people who are going to be beneficiaries of your mission offering, say thank you. I want to thank Father Mike, Father Taylor, and Father Tim for their most gracious hospitality. You truly have three wonderful priests to serve your spiritual needs. Thank you, Father Taylor. And thanks all of you for your generous, prayerful mission support. May God bless you. Please keep us in your prayers and be generous with your mission offering. You will be taken up after communion. May God bless you all. Father, the Son. Please stand. <clears throat> Together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, we turn to the Lord with our needs and petitions. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, <clears throat> that by their example, we may all learn to take up our cross and follow Jesus. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> For people of every nation, that they may know freedom from tyranny and war and experience Christ's vision of peace for our world. We pray to the Lord. For everyone in the labor force, that their employees may treat them with dignity, employers may treat them with dignity, pay them a living wage, and provide with them safe and healthy working conditions. We pray to the Lord. For all who are unemployed or underemployed, that they may not lose heart as they search for opportunities to use their talents. We pray to the Lord. For all who are gathered here, that we may trust in God's goodness and mercy, even when we feel overwhelmed by the crosses we bear. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, we pray for Martha Howard, mother of Damien Howard. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> the prayers written in our book of petitions, for the intentions of the Donahue family, and for the personal needs we now hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you call each of us to be your beloved disciples. Hear us as we cry out to you in faith, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I invite our children forward with their offerings. Our preparation hymns, number 470, In Every Age, number 470. Yeah. 
destiny is cast and at your silent word we return to dust and scatter to the wind a thousand years are like a single moment gone as the light that fades at the end of day in every age oh god you have been our refuge in every age oh god you have been our hope teach us to make use of the time we have teach us to be patient even as we wait teach us to embrace our every joy and pain sleep peacefully and to rise up strong in every age oh god you have been a refuge in every age oh god you have been a Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 499, Only This I Want, number 499.
Let us pray. Grant that you're faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Father Joseph, for being with us, for all the work that you do with the young men from India to proclaim the gospel to all the corners of the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is in it. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 611, For the Beauty of the Earth, number 611. <clears throat> For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies, Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night, Hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise.